food, it's something that brings us all together. Whether it be a small family gathering at a table, husband and wife cooking together, or at a large event like a wedding, graduation, whatever it is, food always seems to bring us together. And my next guest is Sherm Porter of Sherm's Catering. Sherm was my original guest back in 2015 when I started this podcast. So it's going to be great to talk to him about what's transpired over the last six years, how he's weathered the storm of the coronavirus pandemic with his catering business. But Sherm really is passionate about his food, and I think you're going to see that in this interview. Uh, he comes across so passionate. He wants people to talk about food, to get together and enjoy it. And that's why I think we as Americans, we love to get together, we love to eat, we love to party, we love to have fun. Sherm really brings that element to his events. If you've never been to one of his events where he's actually catered the food, you are missing out on something. Um, for networking events, he would bring food, finger sandwiches, desserts. I mean, this is top-notch food. And you'd sit there and you'd be networking at the event with 10 to 12 people, and all of a sudden you'd start talking about the food and have a conversation about Sherm. And that's what's fun about all this. So it's going to be real cool to talk to Sherm and see what he's up to. I hear he's writing a book. He's got a consulting business now, but it's going to be neat to sort of figure out what's happening. What is he doing now? How is he weathering the storm of this pandemic? Because obviously the catering and hospitality business got hit the most. So I really want to dig in and find out how he's weathered the storm and what's going on. So without further ado, let's bring on my very special guest, Mr. Sherm Porter. Our world is changing faster and faster. Humans are constantly on the go. Over 70% of people are not happy in some way. They're living in the shadows of fear, especially in their careers and life. Are we humans doomed? I don't think so. And that's where I come in. My name is Joseph Stanley Reichowski, otherwise known as Joe Wu. Each week, I seek to uncover what it takes to truly live your life to the fullest by finding out through interviewing people what were their failures and what did it take for them to reach success. Their stories are truly inspiring and perhaps they'll inspire you to let go of your fear and live your career and life to the fullest. Okay, everybody, got a very special guest here this week on the Career and Life Show. Mr. Sherm Porter is back in the house. What's going on, Sherm? What's up, Joe Wu, man? What's going on? It's good to be back, man. It's our, I know. This is my second time, man. Yeah. yeah, second time. So um, for those of you in the little intro I did, Sherm, Sherm was my first guest on my original podcast back in 2015, started an audio podcast. And I'll tell you, I was scared <laughs> shitless, basically, doing trying to do this, and Sherm just really made me feel great, and the, the interview went so well. I was like, oh, this is so much fun, and it was a catalyst. So uh, I think it's only right that to bring it back early on as I started this thing and just try to put this together. So, Sherm, it's great to have you back, man. Yeah, great to be back on, man. I love I love the, you know, let's sit here and talk some business. Let's talk yeah, about exactly. people with business. So, yeah, so yeah. The biggest thing I want to know is, you know, I know you've always said, and I've heard this, you always want to be a business owner at a very young age. You know, you uh, repair bikes in your parents' garage, which is awesome. You had a cleaning company, then you had Sherm's Catering, now you have a business coaching company. So take us back to that moment when that spark occurred that said, you know what, I want to run a business. I want to be a business owner. What was that like, that moment? I don't know, man. I was young, you know, and I always, I always articulated to, I, I don't really know exactly when that moment, like that kind of aha moment happened, but, you know, I can, watching, you know, like Houston, on TV and seeing that guy ride around his Mercedes in a big glass building and the oil tycoon, you know, my grandfather owned a construction company. So, I mean, I kind of, yeah, you know, as, as my uncle would tell me that took over my grandfather's construction company, he's like, you know, I, I just had it in my, in my gene. I had to taste for it from, from day one. And I just never could figure out where, 
where that was going to land me. You know, um, I was supposed to actually be third generation taking over the construction company, but I just, I just didn't like, I didn't like being out there. I, I mean, I love working with my hands. I love working and making things, but I, for some reason it just didn't click with me. You know what I mean? So it took a while for me to really figure out, you know, what I love to do. And it took till the catering business. Really. I hated, I hated the cleaning business. You know, I, <laughs> I made a, I made a ton of money. Don't get me wrong. I made a ton of money. Um, and I was a different person back then too. So maybe if sure. I had changed my mindset and my, my attitude and my, and my uh, process with anger and rage, maybe it would have been a little different, but you know, back then it was, you know, it was, I was just doing it to basically prove a couple of people wrong and, and I wasn't doing it for the love of, of being in business, unfortunately. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. And you bring up a great point, you know, being a cleaning business, if you don't like it, is that hard when you really just don't like something, you don't have the passion? Does it just, is it such a grind to get up and get out of bed every day to do it? It was, it was really, it, it was a huge grind, man, because, you know, in the cleaning business, it's about cleaning and, and yeah. the cleaning is, is difficult because, you know, cleaning one person's clean is another person clean. It's no different than food, but you know, I, I guess you have to have like the clean passion. And there's a lot of people that do. I know a bunch of people that are in clean business. That I send referrals to all the time that love what they do. You know what I mean? And I just, you know, unfortunately I didn't really love the whole business. Right. I just love the, the, the being the business owner part of it, but not the whole part of being in the business. And, and you really got to do it no matter what it is. You know what right. I mean? Like you gotta, you gotta love what you do so that, cause there's times where it's tough, man. It's, you know, you might put in a 20 hour day and you got to think to yourself, why am I doing this? Right. You know what I mean? So. That's interesting. So what made you then get ultimately into the food, hospitality, and catering business? Was it a light bulb went off or you just said, that's where I want to be? No. So it's been a passion for a long time. So back in high school, my friends used to, uh, <laughs> we used to pile in my car and go to my house for lunch. And we would always be late for six period <laughs> because we go home. I, you know, I, I would cook up something at lunch and, and they all sit there and next, you know, we, we take a nap after lunch, you know, full belly, there goes the lights. And uh, right. then we'd hurry up and get up and run back to school. Um, food has always been been a very uh, passionate thing for me. Um, even way back when, when I was young, you know, um, my my parents, you know, cooked regular meals. You know, my dad used to try to be this, you know, wagyu barbecue dude that would get drunk and throw beer on everything and it was horrible you would think that I would lean past it but you know like I leaned into it and I just loved I you know then I got in you know high school and I used to throw parties all the time and and then you know I started cooking and it was just crazy then I got in the restaurant business and um one thing led to the other and I just I loved the whole part of you know the the food the service the you know the entertaining the enjoying part of it and right you know, unfortunately, you know, in college, you know, I, I kind of, you know, I had a son, I was going to school, I was working a lot, I just kind of got burned out. And um, that's kind of like how the transition, I, you know, I went into the Navy to kind of just kind of get my head together, get my life together, kind of part of thing. And, and they came out and the, the whole concept of the, of the um, cleaning company was there was a guy in my, uh, in my, in my company that had a part-time cleaning company with his wife and his cousin. And he was oh, wow. making a, he was making really good money doing it like three nights a week. And when I got out, I was like, well, you know, I, I, I it was one of those things I got out to be with my family. Um, and, and, kind of was like one of those kind of like do or die situations. Like if I stayed in, right. I was getting divorced. If I got out, I would hopefully, you know, keep everything together. Well, we all know that that, that didn't work, but nonetheless, I got out and I had to do something. And I'm like, well, we've been cleaning for four years. Like I had to strip wax the floor and make it shine like a brand new car. So, I mean, I don't understand why I couldn't do this. And that's the, kind of how I got started is like, this is what I'm going to do. I'll give it a shot. And I, you know, I throw my eggs in that basket, but uh, then later down the road, I just, decided like you know we were talking about that I didn't I didn't really enjoy doing the cleaning and right um an opportunity arose and I had a friend that was bartending and it needed some help like crock pot recipes and I gave her about six of them yeah. the owner said hey come in you know I had this kitchen you know maybe you can rent the kitchen from me and do some things and I was like nah I'm not getting in the back into the food business I'll stick with all, what I'm doing and <laughs> one thing led to another of a bottle of vodka and I said yes and I, I got back into it and that's kind of how the whole, the whole gig started. You know, I started helping him manage and run the, uh, the bar and the, and the food. And then I started doing special events and then I got another place and one thing led to another. And, you know, now we are where we are. Yeah, that's awesome. And it's been great to see really, you know, grow tremendously since you started this. I mean, I've been around 
the area now kind of involved in our circuit for almost uh almost 10 years like nine years so i've seen you bob even the last nine years it's truly cool to see so um you being the entrepreneur at heart how do you run a successful business like what are some things that it really takes to be successful that's that that is the most common question asked and it's yep. the most it's the hardest question to I answer know, i know <laughs> because it, it takes a lot you know um it's the number one thing, the number one thing I can tell you is if you're getting into this not to work and to pretend that this is going to be a midnight infomercial that you're going to work three hours a week and make a hundred million dollars, it's not. I mean, I, and I, I just want to be honest with people, like you probably work, you're going to work twice as hard as, as you would do in your normal 40 hour week, you know, nine to five job. You know what I mean? But the, the, the let's go back to the thing is that I love what I do. I love food. I love entertaining. So I don't look at the hours that I put in. Um, you know, today's my birthday. It's, just, it's January 24th. Here right, we are. Birthday. Yeah, thanks, brother. Here we are working. You know what I mean? Like I'm working on my birthday. If right. I was in Florida, I would still be doing this podcast with you. Like right. it's 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 not about I normally celebrate my uh my my birthday weekend in Tampa because they have a festival down there. Um right. the, the the pirate festival. And uh, but nonetheless, it's like you're always working. And and it's not that it's not that you're like crazy or wired differently about always working it's just that you love what you do so much that you're right. always working yeah. you know I mean, you're always thinking about how can we do this better or you know when i'm in a restaurant i look at the food they're serving and i go can we do this or can we do this better or can oh, we yeah. try to like spin it a certain way that it'll work great for us at a wedding or at a corporate event or whatever like i'm always taking ideas you know because that's just, you know, I'm always trying to find another way to, to give our customers better service, better food, you know, better pricing, all that kind of stuff. So, you know, that that's just, so work is really the number one, you know, like that stuff. When you put down the first thing to make an entrepreneur, it's work. Yeah. It, you have to outwork everybody. You have to work at outwork your competition. You have to work outwork your employees, it, especially in the beginning. You have to set the the gauge of what is expected and if you think you're going to sit in a lawn chair in a front drinking my ties pointing your fingers at people and they're gonna they're gonna get in the trenches for you you're out of your mind you know what i mean you got to be standing right there next to them in the trenches you know you know fighting the battle because it that's what it is in the beginning it's a battle yeah you know i mean it's a battle to stay alive it's a battle to get ahead it's a battle to be successful you know you're you're it's funny because they're like you're so successful yeah i'm like yeah i'm a 22 year old i'm a 22 year old success story right. you know this had this started 22 years ago driving up route 13 leaving the navy going hmm i really did it this time i have a wife and <laughs> two kids and no job right. hmm, I really did it this time you know what I mean but it just takes it takes you know first it takes the work and then it has to be the passion yeah. you know what I mean because and that's two separate things people don't always they put one and the other sometimes is that right. work and passion are the same and it's not right. you know you got to have the passion because the passion fulfills the work right. that I'm doing this for the right reason. And I'm doing this. And that, that gets into, you know, as the coaches of us, it's the why, right. you know, why are, why are you doing this? Why are you putting in 90, 80, 90, a hundred hours a week? Why, why are you doing that? You know, and, and that comes back to the passion. It comes back to the idea, you know, and nine times out of 10, yeah, we're doing this for the money, but it's, it's really, you know, it's not. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you do it for the freedoms, you do it for the freedom of the, of, of what you can do. You know, I'm doing it now to create a legacy in the company that I can pass on to, you know, whomever, whether it's one of my key employees or right. I sell this to, you know, an, another, a competitor that now wants to, you know, buy me out and go larger. I don't, I don't know what that's, yeah. what that looks like yet, but right. you know, that, that's where I'm at. You know, we've, we've been in business 13 years, so it, it takes time, but they're the three first key ingredients. And then I go to, then I go to, you have to have great, a, a great system right. for, to, to hire great people. And you should always be in to hire people that, that do things better than you do. And everybody like stops and looks then when you say that. Absolutely. I'm, I'm not great at everything. And yeah. the, the, the minute you can figure out what you don't excel at is the best moment of an entrepreneur's life because right. then you know here's the keys and here's the things that i can fulfill yep with other people that do it way better than me because what you do is you as an entrepreneur and, and having that spirit you're going to do it whether you whether you're good at it or not and right. you're going to fail at it greatly 
because you think that I have to do all this stuff, but then you, then when you realize and you actually hire a person that's good at whatever it is that you're not good at, you go, wow, I should have done that a long time ago. Right. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> so, and if you're just an entrepreneur right now, and as you were speaking, <laughs> this whole thing just kind of fell down. So uh, take it down so, and that's how it is. It's, I, it's, yeah, it just, it, it's cool. It's yeah, no big deal. I wasn't even paying attention to that. So that, that tells you where I was at. <laughs> well, exactly. And I was still like, wait, that just fell down. And that's it. But yeah, that's the beauty of us being an entrepreneur. Like, stuff doesn't work and it's like i'm in the mindset like hey i got an interview i don't worry about it and it's the focus and i think that's what's amazing and what i see with you is your attention to detail right um you know with food quality because i've been at a number of your events um especially in in newcastle county the chamber when you provided the food the food quality is always always excellent i mean it is just i mean it is it's like gourmet food i mean it's like it's like the chicken is melts in your mouth. It's great. And I love how you, you know, I remember us talking at a Newcastle County event, I, you know, years ago when we were first doing that podcast and you were like, um, you know, you want to see more guests interact with the food and it just didn't kind of hit me, but it's about the passion. It's about, you know, that's how your passion comes out in every way. So that really is your passion and coming out with the detail and you want guests to have that experience, I guess. Right. Sure. Absolutely. And that, and that's the experience. Like if you can wow them that they, they come to a, a, a normal event where they're expecting subpar food and then you right. just blow them out of the, out of the, out of the water with it, then they're going to like, it's, they're going to remember that. Yeah. And, and that's what I, I try to tell my staff all the time is, especially in the kitchen, there's a little sign in there. It says we have to be 100%, 100% of the time. Right. And it's because the food always has to be right. You know what I mean? Like you, you can mess up, you can mess up in a lot of things and, and sure. we're not perfect, you know, as a company, we, tr- we, you know, we always try to be perfect, but we're not perfect. You know, you can show up a little bit late you show up with the wrong food. It's that's happened where yeah. there's a miscommunication, but if you show up with good food and good service that normally nine times out of 10 will, will combat any other thing that you had there because people like, you know what, every, I could, people just kept coming up to me about how good the food was, you yeah. know? Yeah. We might've forgot something or we might've switched things accidentally because, you know, there's a conversation that happened and our system wasn't that great yet right. on our side. And we didn't notate the change and we sent them what they originally signed for instead of what the alternative was. But I mean, it, it happens, but if you send out good food all the time, if your product and your service are second to none, then people just will keep coming to you and they know, oh my God, you know, and that's the biggest comment I always get is, yeah. oh yeah, he's sharp for, from the chamber. He's always the one putting out all the chamber food. Well, you know, the chamber was a huge part of our business and, yeah. you know, and we wanted to make sure that we represented the chamber properly. My, you know, all my networking friends at the, at the chamber property, the board of directors property, you know, all the salespeople and everybody that makes, you know, us who we are from the chamber, you know, we wanted to represent them. Yeah. You know, it's, it, that's what it's about. Like no matter what you do, whether it's food or anything else, you know, we're a painter, yeah. you know, you guys are making, making gloves, you know, whatever right. it is, like always try to put out, you, you know, 100% the best product. Don't cut corners. You know what I mean? Right. Like figure out how to fix the cost later, but make it right today. You know what I mean? It might've cost you too much money today, but make it right. Always make it right for the customer. Yeah. I can't, I can't stress that enough. You know, like, it happens. Sometimes you make a mistake, you know, make a mistake right. or you, you have to bob and weave, but make sure that if you fix it today for the customers, because if you try to cut that corner, I promise you the customer is going to know. Oh yeah. And, and, and they, you know, and they will comment accordingly. Yep. And that's, and that's huge. And I think the thing is, you know, you create the experience. It's like things happen. You might not see it as a customer, but if you do, you know, cause I've had people in the coaching business where the experience might not have been great. Something happened, you know, especially for a fire walk where they're expecting to go out and do fire and it's pouring rain or it's a blizzard. <laughs> you got to do the last walk inside. But it's all about, you know, communicating and telling those customers, you know, those things and, and really just giving that, that, that big experience. And, and yeah, yeah. It's off. Yeah. And Cause you're going to have to, you know, you're going to have to pivot. I mean, yeah. if anything says pivot 2020 should have taught us pivot. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Like, thank God now we're hindsight 2020. I mean, hopefully, yeah, that's <laughs> but, right. but, uh, but yeah, you, you gotta just as a, you know, that would be a probably number four, number five skill in, in small business in, or as an entrepreneur is that, that you have to pivot because here's yeah. the golden rule. Nothing stays the same. Right. Everything changes and it normally changes daily. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like when you think you're getting everything right, boom, there it is. You have to change. Yeah. You know what I mean? So you just have to always learn to pivot and always learn to, to uh, change with whatever has to be changed. Yeah. And you bring up a great point about shifting and pivoting. Cause I think that's, you know, a successful entrepreneur will always do that. You get into another business or you see how something can change. And obviously with the pandemic, but 
Um, how do you keep your ego in check? Because obviously there's <laughs> you know, we, we, have, we have the ego, right? We're just, we're just like, well, I want it to work. It's going to work. And we just go mad against that wall for weeks. And it's like, wait a second, I got to pivot here. You know, I got, I got to shift and pivot. What I'm trying to do is not working. So how do you keep that ego in check? So I'm, I'm going to give you a lesson. There's two sides to ego and there's two sides to learning how to deal with your ego. Well, like so there, there's the ego that, that everything is going great and you're top of the world and you're the king of the mountain. And that's the, that's the hardest ego to, right. to, to obtain. And, and I learned that lesson very hard because I shit on one of my friends that helped me. And I said some things that were nasty that I shouldn't have. He's still my friend and we're still good, close friends, but I had to learn that lesson a long time ago about how to control your ego, that yeah. all that comes to you can also all go away. Right. And um, you have to, you have to be grateful for everything you have every day and you have to, be able to to maintain that gratefulness knowing that you know if you're at the top that means you're closer to getting to the bottom because you're, you're if you're at the top of that mountain and that peak and that pinnacle that means that the here comes you know like as as coaches yeah there's four seasons so that means that if we're in the spring or the summer that means fall's coming you know, so you have to be ready for it. Now, how fall lasts or how, how long fall and winter last is up to you. But, you know, if you if you take that that summer really hard, that crash could be just as hard. So that, that's the positive side of like being at the top. The other side of always being um, of, of your ego is that I look at it, you know, when I started getting coached, I got coached for this reason is that I had to get my myself in check and, and being able to. Um, communicate better and all that kind of stuff. And what I've learned through that and being coached and learning to be a coach of others now right. is that you just have to, you have to take it one day at a time. And every day you just want to be one, one degree, 1%, one, one thing better than you were yesterday. Always look just to be one degree better because as a, as a an entrepreneur with 100 different things and right. you can't be a hundred degrees better every day no. you know so just look look to to maintain most of it and then pick one or two things that you know that'll be key or crucial in in your um your daily life as an entrepreneur and once you start getting those things better then everything else kind of like falls in its place and that's kind of that's the 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 um information and the, and the coach that coaching information I give everybody is like, you just, just take one step. That's right. all you have to do. You, st you, you start with that first, that's a promise, you know, and that may not be a full step. Maybe it's only a half a step, right. but it's a half a step in the right direction. And just, and that's how you humbly, you know, pivot. That's how, you know, because if you do this and you teach that, there's no sharp turns. There's no, you know, 180 degree turns where half the people fall out of the bus because they threw went through the window right. because you made a, a sharp 180 degree turn. Yeah, you know, March 13th was rough. You know, I'm I'm not yep. going to say it was easy, but you know, already planned. We had just come off of a hugely successful year in 2019, right. running into a 2020 that was going to be more successful. And so we had the systems in place. We had the customers in place. We had the, the staff and everybody was in place to have a hugely successful year. And then, then the door just slammed in our face. Well, we stopped, sat down and said, okay, that we're smart people. We got this far. How right. can we, how can we, what can we do to get, to get through this? Let's, Come up with a plan. Everybody go home tonight. Come up with a plan of what you think we can do. Here's how much money do we need to get to where I think, let's just say worst case scenario with the government giving us money is, you know, in the middle of June. Let's just say that's how long it takes them. Let's come down to a, a bare brass. This is all we, the only people we're going to have involved until that point. How much is it going to cost us between rent, insurance, you know, employees, costs, all that stuff. How much is that going to cost? And then let's come up with a plan that this is what we have to do to get that much money yeah. by that time. And then the government would come in with the PPP loans, EDI loans, all that kind of yeah. stuff. And then, and then by August or, or September, we should be out of this. This was our original plan. You know right. what I mean? So that, and that's how we did it. And then, you know, each time it didn't happen, we, we right. kept pivoting, you know, and, and that kind of thing. But you know, that that's what you do when you put that in place. You know, some other people, it's like, this is bullshit. I quit, you know, like, yeah. you know, and that's, and that's what happened. You know, like they're like, you know, this is not my fault. This shouldn't happen. And you know what, this is bullshit. I quit, you know, and then all 
all these people got you know laid off permanently not just you know i only laid people off for five or six weeks right. um you know, on our doing um there's some people that stayed home because they had kids and other situations but for the bulk of the people they came back after five weeks as soon as i got my ppp money in yeah. the first week of may but um Again, it's just, you know, like that's how you have to look at it and, and, and keep your ego in check is that, you know, the thing is, the thing is bigger than me now. Like, right. yeah, it's cool that it's Sherms. Yeah, my name's on the door. My name's on everything. But you know what? You really don't talk to me anymore. You don't hear about me anymore. I'm not right. back in the kitchen touching every single thing. So it's about, it's larger than just me as a person. And when you get to that point, it becomes really, gra you know, gratifying that you see that you've put this together that you have this you know big team and system and and it's not just like me doing everything all the time because that's exhausting oh, you know what i mean okay. like when you can get out of that you know you know solopreneur part of being right. an entrepreneur it's 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 gratitude and grateful but you have to be careful because at the same time you're celebrating success and now you're the king of all these people and you yeah. got to be careful because you know you gotta, you gotta kind of transition properly. And it, and it's to each one, it's different. You know, for oh, me, it was absolutely. different, you know what I mean? But you just, you know, you have to transition in, you know, letting someone else take charge and having a vice president of operations that runs right. the day-to-day -day business. It takes time to, for your ego and it takes time right. for your mental stability to allow that to happen. I mean, it doesn't happen overnight, but when you start trusting your own process and start trusting the people that you've, you've, you know, brought in to take over certain, things that you don't do well and all that's working and it's working good and you're, and you're all succeeding and, and getting better, then it's, it's easier because you go, Oh, well this, you know, yeah, I guess they don't need me anymore. And then that becomes another ego stint. Right. Like, wait a minute oh now, God. now, Oh my God, now what am I supposed to do? You know, kind right. of thing. So it, it's, it's all, you know, it, it's a, it's always a, a jungling, a juggling of your ego. And, right. you know, I learned from the first time not, not to, kind of do what I did the first time. And I learned from my first experience in my first company. If it took me much longer to get, you know, sales wise and, yeah. and team wise, but I realized that, you know, if I was going to do this for the long haul, I had to put these certain procedures and processes and systems and things in place so that, you know, I could do this for a long haul. I mean, it's, right. you know, I, we can go start a company tomorrow. I can do something tomorrow and open up a company tomorrow and be successful tomorrow. The point is it's going to be all me. Right. You know, every process is going to be me. I'm going to do it all, you know, and that's not ego. That's just, I've done it twice already and I can, and I've helped other people right. do it. Yeah. I can get yeah. you, right. I can get you successful. Now the hard part is building the rest of it, you know, building a foundation is easy. Pouring a, pour, you know, pouring a basement is easy. Now you got to build the rest of the house. You know what I mean? Like they put all the, and then they have all these things in place and all that stuff. So, you know, with other people doing other things and that's, that's the difficult part that you have to learn to be better at is, is, yeah. is letting go and facilitating other processes and having other people's input in your process. You know, like yeah. there's a lot of things in Sherm's catering that's not Sherm's doing anymore. Right. You know, like there's a lot of processes and procedures and things that I realized that, you know, well, this is why we keep having this happen. And this is why, because they're telling me we should do it this way. And, you know, so I, we, you go with it and when it's successful, it's right. good. You yeah. know what I mean? You don't change the change, you change to be better. You right. know what I mean? And that's, and that's what it is. And when you find the hurdles, you learn and ask questions. You know, I have, I have all my managers that actually inter they give me a six month eval. You wow. know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah wow, well, that's right. Get that for the first time and see it and see how your ego looks at that one. Yeah, so, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, when you first start handing these out, they're like, yeah, yeah, I get to eval him. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. You know what I mean? Now but, it's a, now yeah. it's a harder process because, you know, it's not that we're, we do, we do this to, to mean people. We do this to make them better, right. you know, and, and, our, and my manager's eval is between a nine and a 10. There is no other categories. And it's a division of 9.1 to 10.0. Wow. You know what I mean? And that's how critical it is because you're not a manager if you're not a nine, at least a nine every day. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? So now how do we get you to the 10? No one's a 10. I'm not a 10. I fill out my own eval and I, I'm critical of myself. Like yeah. I still need to work in this area. Yes, I'm getting better, but I think we still need, I still need more work and help 
getting better at this kind of manager. And, you know, that's when people really start to come alive is when you're, you're interacting with them. They see that you're, you're a humble person and understand yeah. that, you know, you're not perfect and we're all in this together. Like help me, help you, help me help you kind of thing. And, and that's, you know, that's awesome. So I guess like from, from a standpoint of just letting go, I know like me, even as an entrepreneur, you know, you create a process, it's your baby. And you're like, wow, this is my, pro this is my business. This is my process. And somebody comes and says, Hey, we could do this better. At first you're like, wait, you know, there goes my ego, but how do you manage that? I mean, that's, to me, that's still one of the hardest things. I'm like, wait, what are you saying? You're saying my process isn't that great. You could do it better. But then I'm like, oh, that's interesting. I like it. You know, so it's a balance, but how, how do you balance that? You, you just take it for what it's worth. Like I said, yeah. you know, it, it, once you've learned to check your ego at the door that, yeah. you know, you don't know everything. And I, I warrant comments all the time. Like when we hire new people from other companies, you know, like there's people that have come from Sodexo or Aramark, large corporations. And, and I tell them, look, I, I, we're okay with changing. I'm, I ask you to give me 30 days to understand how we process things. So you can see the whole process, how we do things. One, we don't have an abundance amount of employees like those larger companies do. So we've built a system that we can maximize having the minimum amount of people in, in place. So give me 30 days to look at it yeah. and then give me some input. I'm always for input. Like we do it all the time. How can we make, I mean, it's it's a nonstop thing. I, the, uh, my, my food and beverage head chef, he has a little thing on there. It's a little process that we have. It says, We've created the process. Now we have to execute it. Now, did it work? Yes or no? Yes, go back to number one and keep doing it. No, come down to the next step. Why didn't it work? Wow. It's not about failure. It's about you had a process, you executed the process. Now, did it work for you and the customer? Yes or no? It's simple as that. Yes, it worked yeah. or no, it didn't work. Right. You know, because you don't want to get into those parameters of the wishy-washy, well, kind yeah, of, yeah, but, yeah. you know, it either worked the way we wanted it to work or it didn't work right. the way we wanted it to work. So if it didn't work the way we wanted it to work, then the next question is what didn't work the way we wanted it to work? Now it's specific because now we can spit specifically go after right. what didn't work in that process 20 things in a process may have worked it might have been the middle five it could have been yeah. the last two but whatever it is how can we fix that so that it works next time you know what i mean and now we know and and you look at that every day and in that process is in your mind now yes he doesn't read it every day anymore yes we don't go over it every day anymore but it's already been in his mind it's been in his mind for a year and i ask him you know like when we come back and i know that things didn't work that great i go so how the process work today and he goes well, yeah well we had a little stumble you know we had a little thing with this and i said okay so what didn't work and why didn't it work and right. he goes, well it didn't work for this way and i talked to her about doing it this way so you know you just have to when you start to get processes in your mind yeah you know and in in your staff's mind they understand it took a while i mean they fought this kicking and screaming because it, it's one of those things like that most people come to work they want to come to work do whatever you tell them and leave yeah. you know and, and i tell them look that that's not this isn't where we work this is a place where i value what you tell me you're going to be the best at what you do right and how can we be better how can we all be better? Because if we're all better, we all make more money. If we're all better, we'll all have a better lifestyle. You know, so how do we make it better? And, and that's how you make letting go of the white knuckling of the steering wheel easier yeah. because you know they think like me. You know that they think, and it's not that they say what I say or they say how I say, but they're thinking process right. is equal to what you want to right. yeah they, they question everything they make sure they're following up they're keeping everybody accountable because that's really the point you know when you know they you know what they say is you know when the cat's out to play or when the cat's away the mice play well it's no different you know what i mean right. like if i'm not going to be part of the day-to-day -day, you know everyday process then you have to be able to think and look and see the way I do because now you're taking this off my plate. So if you yeah. are, it'll be, it'll run right and everything will continue to run right. If it doesn't, then it's going to crash and burn. We're going to make a left-hand turn in the side rail and yeah. everything's, everything's going to be on fire in 95. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's it. So. Yeah. Yeah. Take me back to, uh, to March 13th. You know, I remember when, when COVID hit, cause I think we were all like, Oh shit, like <laughs> what's going to happen. And how, how did you kind of manage that? I mean, obviously, you know, I know you have the confidence, you know, you've run successful businesses, but 
how did you manage, you know, the people? Because so many people were, were just panicked and like, it's the end. I heard people say it's the end of the world. Other people are stepping up. And how did you manage to say, <laughs> hey, we're going to get through this somehow? And then also too, like, you know, the shifts you made quickly, how did you just get to those shifts so quickly and realize we got to shift and, and, you know, do take out and things like that? So March 13th was crazy because it was a Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, if I'm not mistaken, Let, let's go back make sure that I'm, I'm saying like, I think it was a Friday. Yeah. It, I'm pretty sure it was a Friday. Um, so here, here's, so it started out crazier than, than you would have thought. So no, it was actually March 15th is when okay. it happened. Right. Um, so that was the, fr- so March 15th is when, when the, when president Trump and the governors were like, I don't know what's going to happen. I think we're gonna have to shut down the yeah. country and, that, and they hadn't done anything yet, but the whirlwind was like, Oh my God, yeah. I think, I think we're gonna have to shut down. So so we had four weddings that weekend. We had one Friday, two Saturday, and one Sunday. Wow. So I have four brides calling Becky going, oh, my God, what are we going to do? And then all those brides' mother were calling Becky wanting to talk to me because they want to talk to owner. What's going <laughs> on? Are you going to try to take our money? You know, that kind of stuff. And yeah. so Becky and I sat down. And I said, all right, well, before we call anybody back – let's sit down and let's talk about all this. Like what's going on? Like what have the venues told you? Because we, we can't do anything like, you know, we don't have our own venue. So as a catering company, you're, you're kind of like, my hands are tied. If the venue says no, then I can't say yes to right. that venue. Like I still have the food. It's ready to go, but you have to now find a place to hold 175 people. Right. That's not always the easiest thing. Thing, yeah. especially in a day or two to figure out so um so we sat down and she said well the venue said that they don't care they're gonna have the weddings i said well if they don't care i don't care right so my second question was has any one of the servers or any one of the staff come to you about any type of issues about working these weddings over the weekend and she's like no nobody said anything they're all ready to go i said okay so we have no problems with staff sure. we well, i know the food's already ready to go because it's right. friday so we have no problems with staff, no problems with the food, and no problems with the venue. So, all right, let's get these these bride these brides mothers on the phone. So they're crying, they're coming at me. Oh my god! I said, man, look. I said, I, you know, unfortunately, I've been through a couple crises in, in small business before. I've been through nine eleven. I've been through two thousand and six and two thousand seven. And you know, in, in, right. in the respective industries, I said, so here's what we're going to do. We're not going to panic. Okay, your food's ready to go. We've talked to the, ve- the all the all the venues, and they said they're going to have your wedding. Wow. Really? Yeah. I said, so there, so, so that's the first key step is that right. we can have the wedding where it's supposed to be. Second, here's the deal. Your food's are ready to go. It's already made for, I have, you're not the only person. I have four events this weekend. You're one of the four events. And obviously my staff is ready to rock. You guys are ready to rock. I said, so we're going to do this. She goes, but, but, but I said, listen to me, they can take me out kicking and screaming in handcuffs, but we're going to have your event this weekend. And it doesn't matter. I said, if they're small, but if you think that we're big potatoes in this world, you're coming down to your wedding, you're crazy. It's big in your world because this is your, your big yeah. event for your, your child I said but this is small potatoes going to this little venue trying to find people having illegal weddings I was like we'll get in we'll get out we'll do what we're supposed to do and everything will be going straight and they were like oh my god thank you so much and it was just you just got to take you know and and so then the so then the questions after that were well what are we going to do next week I said look if I learned everything in the 20 some years that I've been doing this is that let's take this first challenge right. and create the first, let's, exactly. let's finish the first challenge. We can't look past, as anybody would tell you in football, if you're football fans, we can't look past this week's competitor yeah. We and look at next week's, next week's competition. Let's, let's get into this week. Let's crush this weekend. Let's knock it out. Let's kill it. Let's make sure everything's great. So we get, you know, we get, we give the customer what they pay for, like they should have, regardless of what's going on in the right. world right this second. Then, we can recoup on Monday <laughs> yeah. and we can sit down and we can figure out what Monday and the rest of the week's going to hold. And they, they looked at me and I said, that's how we're going to deal with it. We got to deal with this one week at a time right now because things are going to change right. and we don't know what the changes are. So we can have an answer today on Friday and then Monday, everything changes and that answer yeah. isn't right. So now customers are going to be upset with you because you've given them 
a result that now they're banking on. And now the state laws or the federal laws or whatever laws, the venue laws, you know, change. And then, you know, now we're the bad people said we, because we told them it was going to happen or it wasn't going to happen. And now we're telling them they can happen. So now they're making alternate plans because they didn't think it could have it next weekend and blah, blah, blah. So, so that, you know, we got through the weekend. Everything was great. We nailed it out of the park. I was at every single wedding. I was shaking everybody's hands saying, thank you so much. I get it. It's crazy. You know, I'm sorry, but but you got married, you had a great time, and this is going to be a beautiful memory that you're going to remember for the rest of your lives. And like, yeah, there's no way we're going to forget this one. Right. I was right. like, yeah. I get it. We all are going to remember this weekend. Yeah. But nonetheless, you know, like we got through it. And like, oh, thank you so much. You know, and so then Monday came. And Monday was the 18th. And um, most of the time, my head chef has off on Monday. And I said, look, everybody's got to come in on Monday. Um, we got to figure this out. You know, yeah. so meanwhile, from Friday to Monday, everything changed. As of Monday at one o'clock, the state was shut down. You couldn't do anything. There was no yeah. restaurants, no venues, no nothing. So not that it made my decision easier. It just helped right. me because we were shut down. So now I said, OK, you know, and then the only thing was you could do takeout. And I said, well, look, you know, we sat down. I said, we already have the shopping cart that we created, you know, food on. Yeah. So we're just going to start promoting that. And like, well, that's not going to be able to pay everybody. I said, I get that. I said, so let's, the payroll week ends on. So my week, my work, my payroll week, because I pay everybody every week. And it's right. funny because it starts on a Wednesday and ends on Tuesday. I said, so I said, so the payroll week ends tomorrow. Let's, let's give it a whole other day. I, they're like, well, I don't understand. I said, well, look, we, I have two choices as a dealer. Yeah. I could say, you know what? I've had enough of this bullshit after 20 years and I'm done. Or, uh, you know, because then what I do, because now I'm almost 50 and I have to start a company at, at 50. I don't have the energy for that. I really don't. Like, I don't have the energy that I had, you know, 13 years ago when I started this company. <laughs> you know, I, mean? I certainly don't have it now. You guys, you guys collectively as a company have drained almost three quarters of what I had left. Out. So I'm ready to keep where we're at. I know it's not going to be the same. I said, so we're, the four of us, are going to sit down tomorrow morning and we're going to figure out a plan. I'm going to go home, uh, you know, after today, I'm going to go home tonight. I'm going to crunch the numbers and I'm going to give my worst case of numbers and my best case scenarios numbers of what we need each week. If we were to lay everybody off, but the four of us and try to get through this until whenever we think it's going to get through. Right. And they, and they kind of like looked at me and I said, well, that's one scenario. I don't know what's going to happen, but that's the worst case scenario is that we have to lay everybody off, but the four of us, and we try to do these takeout things. And then we see how it takes off. And if it takes off, we bring people back, you know, yeah. one at a time until we figure it out. So that's basically what happened. So Tuesday came about and Wednesday morning, I had to lay off 19 people. And mm -hmm. it was probably the worst, the worst day of my life. Um, and my career in 20 years. Uh, in 20 years in two companies, I have never laid one person off for lack of business or lack of being able to employ them. Um, and it, it for for a lot of people, you know, of the 19 people, I would say the majority was really tough, you know, to, um, to explain to them. But I, 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 I laid it out and I said, look, this is best for you and best for us for the company. Best for you first, let's go over that, is that Right now, they're giving you unemployment plus another three hundred dollars a week or six hundred dollars a week right. in in federal stimulus until we they figure this out. I said I can't give you that kind of money and last yeah. probably more than three weeks. Right. I was like, so you're we're going to be beating each other up about pay, about how many hours, what you need, and yeah. this is best for you and your family right now that you're going to be collecting almost a whole paycheck, if not more than a whole paycheck, because the government is stepping in. Right. I can sustain with two or three people for a longer period of time. And then if I need you, I can bring you in because unemployment, you're allowed to work up to the amount of um, money that you get before right. they start taking money out. I said, so I can bring people back as I need them and help if we get busy. And then, then we decide if we're so busy that I have three or four people working there part-time every, er, you know, every day, then I'll just bring one full-time person back. And then we'll keep doing that until I can bring everybody back. And that's how we kind of like strategically had to do it. And literally like I, I laid everybody off and I brought one guy back, like literally Thursday where the orders were through the roof by Thursday. We 
needed help. And so I, the one guy came back like a couple hours, two or three times a week. And then I brought another guy back um, two or three times a week. And next thing you know, like the one guy was back before May. And yeah. then, and then the, everybody, I brought everybody else back. Um, it was May 6th that everybody, uh-huh. cause that was a Tuesday. I got my money May 5th on a Monday and uh, I brought them back May 6th. I'm sorry. May 6th was the Monday. May 7th, everybody came back on May 8th because uh, that started to pay week. So everybody yeah. started full-time back May 8th. So it was really, you know, four or five weeks. And, and I, w- I was happy that, I, you know, we came up with a plan like that. But that's – you got to do that. Like, yeah, you know, this isn't right. something – you know, you didn't we didn't make a bad decision. You know, we didn't right. say, well, let's try this out, and it didn't work, and it crushed the company. Yeah. Like, this is for everyone. For everyone out there, everyone listening to this, this was something that, that you couldn't plan for. Yeah. You know, yeah, there's going to be gurus out there. You should have six, eight months worth of everything in the bank – and the in the bank to, to cover everything well yeah you're right but you know what as a small business owner that doesn't happen, doesn't happen. you know right you know i mean we have some residual we have some money sitting in there we have you know the the egg money but you know it, it is not going to last for you to not have business yeah. that 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 whole model of having six months in the in, in the bank is for something like a rough patch it's not for things to get shut down right. and you right. have to fully fund your company for six or eight months well, right that's not what it's about yeah, so exactly. you know again you know like not you know not kick knocking anybody's theories but this this is something that we couldn't control you know and we right. had to yeah. you know and then then they decided who was who was you know essential and who was and how it was just I just I everybody was like what do you think and I'm like all I care about is me I have to get through this I have to get through this for my for my employees I have to do this for my company we have to get through this and and that's all I care about I, I'm not being I'm not trying to be mean and nasty I'm not trying to not care about other people but at the end of the day this is a war right now and I have this is a battle and I gotta I gotta get through it for us you know what I mean? And then three quarters of the way through it, yeah, I started becoming an advocate for small business because I, I saw that we weren't being treated fairly or responsibly through the state and through the federal government. And I started speaking out. I started joining some of the associations that, you know, I was already a member of and now really being vocal about it, you know, kind of thing. But you have to, like, you know, you have to tell people when they don't understand it. You know, in the beginning, I came up with a plan and handed it to two of my state representatives about, here's what I think we should do. And they're like, you know, that's going to cost like $350 million. Let's go. We got it in a reserve account. I don't understand why you don't want to spend it. And and if there was any time in the state of Delaware to enact that other reserve that they can't touch, now was the time. This pandemic was the time to open that up, use that money, and then reallocate it under something else. So it didn't take a pandemic or a severe tragedy to open that money. You know, it's there for to help us. It's not there not to use. So, you know, and in this circumstance, this wasn't because, you know, the politicians didn't properly manage our money and they need $300 million. This is because this is something that happened and nobody could Nobody can plan for it. Nobody can foresee. And yeah. but here's seven hundred million dollars we have sitting on the sidelines waiting to help us, yeah. waiting to fix this, you know, and, and that's what frustrated me is why they didn't see it and why no, they weren't using the money. So totally. Yeah, I agree totally. And and you you bring up some good points too about you know being active in your community. That's the one thing I always loved about you is being active with the Chamber of Commerce, you know, helping <laughs> others at networking events. Um and just showing up everywhere. Why is it so important to be involved in the community? Because I see a lot of business owners are like, they keep to themselves, that's it, you know, and, and they're not involved at all and they don't want to be. Why is it important? I think it is important to be involved in the community. So I got this from my grandfather. And um, cool. the rest of my, uh, <clears throat> the rest of, the rest of my family works. So I'm, I'm the only entrepreneur in my family, except for my cousin married, Sal, who owns a gas station. So, we're the only two that are entrepreneurs besides my uncle who had my grandfather's business. So my grandfather used to tell me, you know, any chance you can get to help your community or help you out, help the community out, helps everyone out. You know, again, you know, the whole um, adage that I didn't learn until way later is that, you know, a rising tide helps all boats lift, you know, right. but we have as a community, you know, once you become an employer and once you come out of business in the community you have a, a, an obligation to your community like you can't be all take and no gift you know what i mean and you got to give and help and it, it's not all you know there's there's some people in the community give a lot of money to a yeah. lot of different charities but you give what you can 
when you have it to give. And that, and that's what you do. And that's what he taught me. He's like, he was always in the church and he always gave it to church. And, you know, even to the day he died, he was doing Eucharistic church for, for parishioners that were at his church. And he, and that's what he believed in is the give back. You know, I'm, I'm not as religious as he is, but right. I, I do it in other areas for other things. You know, I have a lot of friends, friends and family that have been affected by cancer. Um, you know, there's, there's, and I just look at, you know, it's a positive thing to do. And it and it's also good for advertising, you know, because it's it's not a negative that you're helping, right? But in my business, we're normally giving out food. So if I'm doing food for a charitable event, people are like, "Wow, this is really good. Who did this?" And then they're going to ask me to help them, you know, with their next event. It could be a charitable event. It could be not a charitable event. But it's all part of networking, you know. And that's how you you help. You know, there's networking you pay for. There's networking that. Um, you get paid to do. And then there's things that right. you just, you know, and then there's other things that I just, you know, I'm a huge proponent. My sons play baseball. I play baseball. You know, I sponsor two teams right. um, every year because that's just what I did. You know, like that, I know how it is to be a coach. I know how right. it is to, to be on, you know, travel teams and have, need all that money. So I do what I can there. And then I help other things. Like that's my personal, like I, we, we sponsor, we're a sponsor of two different leagues, one in Newark and one in Wilmington. And, uh, you know, that's my personal thing. And then everybody I work with has, you know, there are things that they do in the community. And then I have friends that, you know, are really active in certain things. And, you know, now the company has taken on um, an initiative to uh, partner with power. Um, and we've done things with, uh, with autistic uh, students and, and uh, adults for a long time where, and we have, you know, we do have an employee that has autism has been with us for about four years. So, you know, there's a lot of things that, you know, you just, you do because it's the right thing to do. You know what I mean? Like you help out because you should, you help out. I and mean, then that helps other people realize that it can be done, you know, and, and that's, and that's what you do. You just, you try to give back because that's, you know, what the community wants to see in it and it's good for you you know and if you go back to the chinese of yin and yang you know you're putting right. good things out there good things come back to you so yeah. you know it's it's all about that you know that good vibe that good the good stuff that you put out you you know hopefully you, you know you do enough good things to to make up for the bad things that you did in life and, uh, <laughs> and good things come to you so you know yeah now i want to give you two last questions here as we uh, as we wrap this up because this has been always a fun journey with you so if someone's breaking into the uh, catering business and they want to get into it, hospitality, what would you advise them to do to start up? Well, um, you got to have a you had a niche market. You got to have, you know, your customers have have your. Uh, make sure you have, you know, one you need money. You're going to need some money to get started because you got to have equipment and stuff like that. You got to have a kitchen. Um, you know, it, that's a, that's a tough question to answer, like right off the bat, because know, there's so many, <laughs> there's so many narratives. Cause you know, the, the, the biggest thing is everybody's going to say, well, you should open a restaurant. Well, that's probably the, that's the reason why you're opening a catering company because the restaurant is such a hard business yeah. to be in. You know what I mean? Like with catering, at least I know right off the bat, nine times out of 10, how many people are going to show up? So I have the right staff, the right food right. and the right stuff. But um, you got it. You, you know, you definitely, you got to be ready to work. Um, I would make sure that, you, you know, in, in, you know, in our area, you got to have a kitchen that's certified, make sure you're probably licensed right off the bat, you know, and already have a group of people that you, that, you know, they like your stuff. Like you can't do this blindly. You can't go in and just say, you know, Oh, I'm opening up and, and, and think that the customers are going to come have some customers already that you're already doing know that, you can support your own brick and mortar um, or, you know, you could use a church to, to rent a church out, you know, one of their kitchens. Sometimes they don't use it full time. Right. You know, so you can rent it out that way. Um, we they, we don't have um, uh, kitchen share programs technically in the state of Delaware. There is the one in uh in downtown where they have those they have that little cafeteria with all the kitchens, but it's not really a share kitchen. It's like you rent that spot. Yeah. Um, but you know, there's a lot of little ways to get to get into into it. It's just, um, you know, it's 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 not easy. It's it's really not, especially now. You know, what I mean, like to, I would say, wait. My my answer to you right now is wait, unless you have the customers. You know, like because we really don't know where we're going with this. You know, we don't know how the the capacity for the number of people are allowed to congregate. You know, right now in Delaware, down to ten. You know, most special most weddings are at least they start at least at a hundred. Mm -hmm. You know, what I mean. 
but you know, like, so you don't know where that's going to be. Um, so catering is one thing, you know, like it's just normally catering is larger events, you know? So right now we're kind of handcuffed as to the number of people we can do. So we've pivoted because we had this market already, you know, but it wasn't, it's not the, the market, you know, solely that we want to be in moving forward. So we're waiting like everyone else is to, to see what, what's going to happen with the restrictions. Yeah, and that's a hard thing right now, just a kind of a waiting game. It's like, what's going to happen, you know, especially getting back into like last year, February, March, you know, cold and flu season, is this going to ramp up again? Are the vaccines going to be effective? So now I think it's yeah. a good point, just wait and, and just wait this out a little bit, maybe. Yeah, you know, well, I think right now we're getting ready to come, we're, we're coming down because, yeah. you know, normally December, January is when the cold and flu season starts. Yeah. And, you know, and now we're, we're, you know, so March is probably your next indicator because, yeah. you know, it, it comes out, you know, February eh, and then March is like your last bit before spring comes. So yeah. hopefully we're still, you know, you we're going in the downward trend and we stay in the downward trend and you're right. Hopefully these vaccinations will get out to the 65 and older so that, you know, cause that's the target area right now is, you right. know, they need to get it first and then, and then start getting it out to everyone else after that so that we can help. Cause that's really where the numbers are, yeah. you know, so. Yeah. So, yeah, think getting back in the last question here on, on uh, you know, pivoting, you know, you, you've obviously started uh, some business consulting as, as well. So what's next for Sherm? Is it continuing down that path to help other entrepreneurs continue to care? Or what's what's next for Sherm? Yeah. So that's that's kind of so this has been something that I've been kicking the can around up working a lot for a while as you know, I've been helping people at, at the chamber. I've been speaking at University of Delaware at their, their entrepreneur program. I've been doing some other things with other people. You know, Mike and uh, Mike Warmer and I have a podcast yeah. about small business. And I had always, you know, since we all went to that one coaching thing way back when, talking about writing a book, I've always like, yeah, I should write my story, you know, but I didn't really want to write a story. I wanted to help entrepreneurs like with this journey because it's hard, man. It's it's, it's a hard journey. So yeah. that's, that's where Sherm's is kind of headed it, um, slowly, but we're, we're, we're moving in that direction. Well, it's, you know, it's, obviously I can't just let go of the company, you know, the catering company right now. So right. You know, it's one of those things that is a slow journey, but my book is, so the, 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 um, the script of the book is done. Now it's the, right. the, the revisions, the um, adding and subtracting, getting the, the cover done. And then, so I should be launching the book. I'm hoping for like the middle of February, February for small business. Um, I don't have the, so we, we've changed the name three times, so we haven't concreted a name yet, but it's, it's all going to be helping small business. And um, I've partnered with some other people as well. And I think that's the journey that we're going to start to come down is to help small businesses, you know, um, I like it becoming to help get them more effective. Like there's a lot of things that I could have done quicker if I really knew the resources were there. And the problem is, as a small business owner or an entrepreneur is that you get in and you get horse blinders on and yeah. you're, you're in the process so much that you really don't lift your head up. And there's no one there saying, Hey, you need working capital. These guys do it pretty easily. Why don't we submit an application there versus the bank that keeps telling you when you make your deposit, like, Hey, I think I'd like to get a business loan. Right. And the bank goes, yeah, well, I don't think so. You've only been in business for like a year or six, months or two years or your credit's not that great or whatever the case is right. you know what i mean so um there's other assets and avenues out there and then it's you know like if you are a solo business or like you're, you're we're already wearing a lot of hats and then to be able to try to figure all this out hey here's someone that can help you like maybe get past a few hurdles that you don't need to have because it would a little bit of a voice and a little bit of steering them in the right direction. They don't actually go that path with all those hurdles. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's, it's just something, you know, I think that I like helping and I like helping other people in their business. And I think instead of opening another company <laughs> at, at, at almost yeah. 50, I think maybe this is the way that I help other people and get yeah. satisfaction out of building other companies that I help somebody else build companies. And I just, you know, I get paid to coach them and help grow them and get the satisfaction out of that. And as, as the years, you know, I, I really want to start um, enjoying more of life and, and, and getting, you know, some more, some more water time in, some more vacation yeah. time in. And, and when you build companies that, that in the beginning, that's tough. So it's it just easier, you know, at this point now with everybody being on zoom, it's just easier. I can, you know, I can video conference from my hotel room anywhere yep. on vacation. Cool. Anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think I, you know, that I just, I want to kind of, kind of grow in that area. Um, you know, I say that, and I've said this, for six months and I'm like, this is like the voodoo, 
is that I keep saying that I'm not going to open another company and, you know, or other, other ideas or stuff like that. And then something falls in your lap, but this is my, this is my focus right now. You know, I, I we've been working hard for the last three months to, to, uh, nice. to get this book finished up and, uh, and get, and get it and get it published so that I can really start knocking that i've created a new logo for my coaching company like four different times because <laughs> i just didn't like what i had you know you throw something out there and you throw something out again and yep. and, and then uh, yeah yeah and i and i've also we, i have also started this uh this cigar dinner um once a month and oh, that has cool. become yeah that has become pretty pretty cool that we get a bunch of cool dudes sitting around and just just having having good conversation around, around good food. Yeah. So it's just one of those things like, you know, it's like, I think that's the more of those kind of things where it's, you know, not the day and day grind, but you know, this, this, that, that dinner is going to get huge. I've been doing it obviously in the, in the winter months and yeah. it's, it's smaller, but uh, you know, once the spring comes, I think it's going to be 20, 30, you know, yeah. high functioning people but it's again it's just the way i like to network and get around right. and, and and entertain so that's kind of kind of where i'm at yeah the, the coaching thing is 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 going to be you know the right now the the flame is kind of low and it's on a simmer you know but i think we're gonna you know I like come, how you use that yeah <laughs> well you know I, you're gonna you always have there's there's a lot of quotes you get from me it's either a naval quote right it's either that i cuss and use the f word and i haven't done that here in an hour i'm know, very proud i'm very proud of myself i, was waiting for it. I know but I'm, I'm very proud of myself <laughs> that for for an hour an hour and five minutes i haven't used that um <laughs> Because that's that's the naval reference, is that yeah. you know, as a sailor, um, and then food. So you get you get a naval reference. That's where the degrees came from. You know, move one degree, one degree, uh, burn the boats, that kind of stuff. And then, uh, and then of course, you know, you always have your food references. Where you know, it, it just is what it is. Like you yeah. know, you've been it so much that you know, I'm always going to have a food reference some way, shape, or form. But yeah, it's. I think we're really going to start to turn a fire up on the. Uh, on the on the on the the coaching side of small business and and I think as this as the pandemic kind of uh, weans out, yeah. there's going to be a lot of people that are going to need some help and and Absolutely. help getting resources, help getting information, help getting things together and and I think it's you know it's the time to really step up as a community leader and say hey here I'm here to help you you know navigate through the next steps of this and how do we get out of this you know how do we get out of this and become better? Or is it, is it, you know, do you make the decision that now's the time that I think, you know, this is, this is over. So there's always two ways to everything, you know, yeah. you got to figure out which is the best way. Um, but yeah. Love it. You know, it goes back to pivoting, you know, Hey, you're thinking yeah. you're going to head in the future. It's cool. <laughs> yeah. You gotta, and you gotta have a plan, man. You know, yeah. it's a actionable plan. It's uh, you know, you, you always got to have something on the horizon. And I, you know, we're always still looking in the company, you know, we're looking to, right. to get our own place so that we have our own venue. So that's always on the horizon. And, you yeah. know, that may, that may be something that, you know, keeps the uh, coaching thing on simmer that I, you know, we start building or we take over a place and I have to get it up, you know, get those new systems in place and that kind of stuff. So, but yeah, you know, that's, you never know where it's going to hold, but that's, that's, that's kind of like the, the action plan currently. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, this has been great, Trim. I really appreciate you uh, joining us again. This has been an hour-long journey of just digging into uh, what's made you successful. You know, you're, you're like a local celebrity, local entrepreneur. I always appreciate these conversations, and um, I'm hoping we can do this live once things kind of get better and, and we can really sit down and do some cool things, maybe over cigars or something. I yeah. Think. We, I think that would be great, man. We'd have to sit down and have a cigar and a scotch and uh, like go over it. some more stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. I appreciate you having me on Joe. You know, it's always been great. Yeah. Um, and we do do some good stuff together, some fire walking and stuff like that, but yeah, let's, oh, yeah. Uh, let's, uh, let's keep this going, man. Yeah. Sure. Important everybody. Thank you again. Thank you. I appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks Joe. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Was that not fun? talking to Sherm and learning all about his history being in the Navy, going from a cleaning place to hospitality and catering business and learning about all the problems and all the challenges he's had and what he's overcome. Sherm is a local legend here in Delaware and I believe in the East Coast. He's passionate about his food, passionate about the customers, and you could hear it in his voice if you heard multiple times how he wants people to enjoy food, how he wants people to get together and how he takes care of his employees. I mean, think about the biggest pandemic we've been through in a century, and what did Sherm do? His first focus was on his employees, making sure their health and wellness was taken care of. Now, even though he had to you know, let go of some people temporarily, 
what did he do? He hired him right back. So that is the mark of a true entrepreneur doing everything he can for his people. And what's interesting is, is now he's doing a consulting business. So uh, he's expanding and that's what entrepreneurs do. They never, never settle. And this was so much fun talking to Sherm because it brought back a lot of memories. He was the first one I had, as I mentioned, on my original show. Now that he's back and doing things, it's great to catch up and great to talk to him and learn so much about what's transpired in these last couple of years. And he's got so many things going, books, everything else. And uh, I just can't wait to see what's next. So thank you guys for watching this one and uh, bon appetit.